Hey girls, Tiffany Dawn here and happy Tuesday Girl Talk and I'm here with my hubby James. Hey guys. We are about to do a collab video with our new friends Matt and Esther over in the UK. Hello, my name is Esther and this is my husband Matt. Hiya. <laughs> we run a YouTube channel together called Matt and Est where we talk about all things faith and living a life with God. And their channel is amazing. It's so funny. Definitely go check out their channel and subscribe. So today we're actually going to talk, the four of us, about how we knew when we met the person we wanted to marry. Everybody's story is mm -hmm. totally different, but we want to share some things that helped us know that we want to get married and hopefully those things can help you girls too. So give this video a big thumbs up if you like it and hit subscribe if you haven't already. We'd known each other when we were kids, but lost touch for like 12, 15 years. Yeah. And when we re-met a few years ago, I think we were both a little bit curious. Like, mm -hmm. is there going to be something mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. There was not. There was absolutely <laughs> nothing. In fact, when yeah. Tiffany left my apartment, I thought, wow, that was really disappointing. That girl is very boring. <laughs> It's true. It was very wrong. We reconnected again a few months after that, and that's when we started actually getting to know each other because mm -hmm. you can know somebody in your mind from afar or yeah. get coffee mm -hmm. with them once and you're like, I had coffee with this person and I know now he's the one for me. But you can't really know that till you get to know somebody. And mm -hmm. once we started getting to know each other, we were just very intrigued. I thought she was really awesome. When I finally figured out that she liked me, I was like, yes, I want to date this girl. But at that point, I didn't know if we were gonna get married or not. I just knew I wanted to date her. I just kind of knew that that was the next step. So me and Matt, we first met at this Christian youth group. We weren't really friends, no. like, but then we kind of reconnected when we were a lot older. So it was like we're meeting again for the first time. Yeah. I ended up having to work through a lot of things. Like there's a lot of insecurities in my life, and I just I really wasn't sure if I could like trust her or build that bond in that way because mm. when you get hurt before you really want to put up those defenses and those barriers stuff but I was just praying this one time I was really praying and I was asking him look can I trust this girl because I don't want to get hurt and in this one moment when I was praying I literally just had this presence just come over me and it was just a resounding yes you can trust her and I had just complete confidence that I could just pursue this and God had told me trust her go for it so for me deciding that I wanted to marry Tiffany was a slow process <laughs> I've kind of when I tell people about it I liken it to wading into the water at the beach each step you take you get sort of deeper into the water and I felt like as our relationship progressed I waited in deeper. We talked about deeper issues, more personal things. I wasn't saying, oh, do I want to marry her now? Do I want to marry her now? All I was really asking was, do I want to go deeper? But eventually I thought, I don't, I don't want to leave. This is where I want to start to swim, if you will. And I know that sounds really corny <laughs> because it is kind of I corny. love it. <laughs> um, but the point was eventually I got to a place where I was like, you know what? This is where I want to be. I want to be with Tiffany. Before we kind of reconnected, I'd been on a gap year course. And during that gap year course, we weren't actually allowed to date for that whole 10 month period. You knew that you were focused on God. Yeah. And so I think when I came back from my gap year course. You were all ready. Uh, yeah, like, I was all ready to <laughs> go out and <laughs> yeah, I was really a strong point in my relationship yeah. with God. Like, I really felt like I was completely trusting Him and I was walking with Him. One of the main ways that I kind of was trying to find out, oh, is He is He the one? Is this it? Was just to pursue God more. Because I kind of had a similar experience to what Matt described, where I was actually on holiday and I was just kind of walking along this beach and I actually felt God was saying to me like oh just go with it like yeah, just yeah. just have a go just like see where it leads like there's no yeah. need to rush it but just I remember that just go with it just go with it just go with it just go with it it's fine and it's so good to just give yourself that time to kind of take it one step at a time and there's not like a certain amount of time that's the right amount of time I think a lot of it depends on your age where you mm -hmm. are in life we had a fairly quick dating relationship we were also in our late 20s and I dated people mm -hmm. before and we were, were both sort of like established yeah we'd like lived on our own we had mm -hmm. jobs we had money <laughs> we had enough That's money the real to get thing. married yeah it was important um but just realize that time is your friend you don't have to rush anything you don't have to know he's mm -hmm. the one right away and i think at the end of the day it came down to all these things and then this just deep sense of peace i think mm -hmm. with a lot of other guys i dated i'd had this like concern like something wasn't quite right and i was trying to make the pieces fit but they didn't and with James, it just felt like it all fell into place. And I think there are a couple of 
kind of more tangible ways you can look at that. One of the things that we used to do is that we used to set aside time every week to have a Bible study and it was just one night a week and we'd spend that time kind of focusing on God. In, in those moments you actually do get to know each other yeah. a lot better <laughs> than you would if you were just having pizza, which is a strange yeah. thing, because when you're looking at God, I think naturally it cuts to like the deeper things within people, yeah. like what's going on in your heart, what do you think, how do you feel yeah. when you're looking at God, those things inevitably come up. Another thing that we did that was so important was we would actually talk about what would it be like for us to get married. Oh no! Before we said, yes, we're definitely getting married, we said, well, what would it, what would it look like? You know, where would we live? Um, What's you know, really important to us? Yeah, how would we serve together? Do we want um, kids? Mm -hmm. yeah. When would we want kids? I know a lot of people who get married and one person really doesn't want kids and one person really does. Or somebody who really wants to live in Africa the rest of their life and somebody who wants mm -hmm. to live in the mm -hmm. suburbs in New York. Mm -hmm. And those are very different things. So that's the kind of situation you want to have that conversation before there's a ring on your finger. Because what you'll be able to see as you start those conversations is how does this person deal with compromise? Mm -hmm. with having to give things up with not getting their own way? How do they handle discussions? Are they able to express what they really think? Another thing that, that you really have to consider, what you need to ask is, is this person pushing me closer to God or driving me further away from them? You can end up getting really, really just like so infatuated with someone that you just make it kind of all about them. And it's almost yeah. not that you forget about God, but you just kind of leave God aside thing and yeah. it's just, it's all about them. Yes, and you get carried away, you get yeah. swept away, don't you? All you're kind of yeah. thinking about is, oh, does this person like me? Relationships yeah. are exciting, so you need to like, even though it's hard, take a moment to step away from that mm -hmm. and objectively think, are they drawing me closer to God? Yeah. Or am I just really excited and loving it? <laughs> I think the real clincher, for me at least, was knowing that our family and friends were so on board with our relationship. Mm. Every guy I'd brought home in the past, and a lot of them were great guys. There were some not so great ones, but there were some really great ones. And every time my dad was like, nah, you could do better. And then with James, he comes to pick me up for our first date that we didn't even know was a date. And my dad was already like, hmm. Like this guy could be perfect. That was a huge thing for me because mm. there's so mm. many warning signs that I'd missed in the past about relationships and having that confirmation was huge. Yeah. And, and my, my experience was when I was in a bad relationship, I was the last person to know. Yeah. My family knew, my friends knew. They wouldn't necessarily tell me though. Um, so you need to go out and you need to ask people like what they yeah. honestly think. That's the biggest advice. Yeah, I'd but give that, that was that was what gave us comfort because both yeah. of us were like really concerned. Oh, this is the biggest decision of our life. What can we do to know that this person isn't secretly a really terrible a person? Serial killer. Yeah. I don't know about a serial killer, but <laughs> but still, like it's there's so much comfort to know there are these wise people. And they've all gotten to know my girlfriend. Yeah. and they think that we would be a good fit. So I feel more comfortable, I feel more at peace. Yeah. And another really important kind of piece of advice is just like make sure that you're mm. comfortable yeah. being yourself around them. When you kind of first get into a relationship or you first meet someone, you really kind of want to present the unflawed image of yourself yeah. to them. I guess as girls you kind of want to have your makeup on, you want to have your hair done, the best behaviour. So when you're actually married to someone, they're going to see you without your makeup on. Yeah. They're going to see you when you're not very well, they're gonna see you at all sorts of points. You can't have this perfect yeah. image of yourself all the time. And so when you're kind of trying to figure out is this person the one, a really big kind of pointer is do you feel relaxed around them? Don't let them be interested in, in the mask yeah. or the persona yeah. or the Facebook highlight reel or anything like that. It's just it's gotta be you. But it is a process like so if you just turn up <laughs> in like your pajamas and you've not made any effort and, and then they're like do you actually want to go? And you're just like, what? Don't, well, don't you like me for me? Don't worry, like, yeah. it comes over time, it totally does. And it's a choice yeah, to continually, like, love someone. And it's not just that one day out of blue, this person's gonna no. appear and they're gonna be so perfect and it's just gonna be like, oh, you're the one, like, you're just the person that will never annoy me. God's love, not Hollywood's yeah. love. God's yeah. love. So it's like, love is a choice and you're gonna have to, whoever it is, you have to make sure it's a person that you know you can continually, yeah. continually choose to love every day. So girls, thank you so much for being with us today and thank you so much James for doing this You're and welcome. Matt and Esther for sharing their story. Girls, do check out their channel. Make sure to subscribe. They're amazing. And I can't wait to see you again on Friday. So have a good day. Bye. Oh, sorry. Lip gloss. <laughs> My lip cheek be popping. <laughs> Shining. <laughs>